Guys, hello. Are we here? Am I here? Are you there? How are we doing? How are we doing? Oh, Hattie's here. Can you hear Hattie? Um, hello. I'm just doing a kind of like tousled thing right now. Oh, hello. Um, oh, ah, I'm gonna drink some water. How's everyone doing? Hello, hello. Stay hydrated, everyone. So what's going on? So much hair, so much. Um, hi guys, I missed you. How are we doing? Um, I was just trying to get my hair together. <laughs> um, I thought we'd do a hair tutorial today. What do you guys think? Uh, um, I am, I'm, yeah, I missed you guys too. I am on day seven of this last round of hair washing. You guys love the hair tutorials. That's very sweet of you to say. I feel like I feel so out of my element doing hair tutorials, but um, but I I like that you know one positive thing about this time is that it's getting us all comfortable doing things that maybe we weren't so comfortable with. Oh, I've got lipstick on my nose. Um, yeah, so that's one of them for me because people have been asking me for years, which is very sweet of them to do hair tutorials or makeup tutorials. And I was just kind of brushed it off a little bit, get it brushed it off. Um, because, you know, I was like, well, if I'm gonna, I'm gonna do more tutorials, they're gonna be more sewing tutorials. But I like the way like the Patreon and the quarantine and everything has gotten me like thinking a little more broadly. So that's nice. Oh, Missy's here. Missy, you wanna watch me do a hair tutorial? So Missy, um, if you haven't heard me say, Missy's the one who does my hair for charm patterns. She does all the hair for all the models for charm patterns. And um, she's amazing. And she just, like her hair is on a whole other level from anything I can teach you. So that's just my disclaimer every time I show you this. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I like, the other thing I like doing is kind of mixing it up um, between like wet sets and pillow rollers and curling and all of that um, and tutorials that you can do just with dirty hair and no curling or like time consuming styling. So let's say you went to bed at 2 a.m. last night after a long night of knitting, watching New Girl and playing Animal Crossing, <laughs> just hypothetically, let's just say hypothetically, that's what you did. And you were like, uh, I can't be bothered to set my hair. Then you have options the next day. Who would do that? <laughs> we have to talk about Animal Crossing later on too, guys, after I do my tutorial. Um, so you tried rollers, it turned out very well. Oh, that's awesome. All right, everyone. So, oh, that's nice, Megan. Megan says, my wings slash poofs with a bun a couple of weeks ago is one of my favorite new hair ups. That's so nice. <laughs> okay, so should we get right into it? And then we can um, talk about Animal Crossing and any other pressing items. Um, so, so guys, I have been wearing my hair for these live streams lately in like a little bumper bang and a sort of I Love Lucy kind of scarf turban sort of thing tied up around the head. And you guys have really liked it. And so I just thought I would um, show you how, how I do it. Um, so again, you don't need to have set your hair or anything. Um, this is my sort of like natural, Texture you can see has a slight wave to it and it's getting really long. Um, I have bangs that come to like right here and I'm just gonna kind of roll those up into a bumper bang and then we're going to do a funny little like twist up with the rest of the hair and put a scarf over it. So the things you need are a rat for your bumper bangs. How attractive is this? You like the looks of that? This is a rat. Um, I bought one in brown, obviously, because I'm a brunette. 
And um, I ended up having to cut it down a little bit. Um, they also sell them in like the donut shapes where you can like snip them and then they'll become this cylindrical shape. Um, so I will warn you that they can start to kind of come across after you cut them. So I did some hand stitching on this one and it actually looks like it's time to maybe go back and do a little bit more hand stitch around it. So that's what you need. And then you also need a scarf for this. So I have, um, I think I'm going to wear this triangle, this tool triangle scarf today. This is the one I usually sleep in, actually. It's a like pink tool. It's by Jacconet. And um, it's just a triangle. I also, the other scarf that I use for this hairstyle is this little pebbly chiffon one. This is vintage. I buy a lot of vintage scarves too. People always ask me about making scarves and I'm like, why? <laughs> there are always like so many bins of vintage scarves um, in vintage stores and they're usually like a couple bucks. So this one's great too. Um, just a square and you can make it into a triangle obviously by doing that. So you got that. You're going to need some bobby pins. Woo! Bobby pins. Um, and some hairspray. Patty, did you want to come join? And some hairspray. This is the one that I really like, this bedhead masterpiece. Okay. And a hairbrush. All right, everyone. How many inches across are the scarves? Um, I don't have a measuring tape right here, but um, I think... I put the dimensions of the Jack O'Net one, or you can find the dimensions of the Jack O'Net one online. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to brush forward the portion that I want to become my bangs. Okay, so you're gonna need like a nice sort of handful of hair. And the look should be that they start kind of at the center of the top of your head. Does that make sense? So like right here, the very like due north. <laughs> um, okay, you guys are answering each other's questions. That's great. All right, so I'm going to brush that forward. If you have, my hair is so staticky today, guys. I'm sorry. Um, okay, so if you have like thin hair, you can do some uh, teasing right now to kind of make these a little bit fuller. And actually, I'm going to go grab my teasing brush. Talk amongst yourselves. It's just right in the bathroom. I'm coming. Okay. So you can just use like one of these little teasing brushes to just kind of tease up like that to just get a little more fullness to cover your rat. But if you have like really full hair, you might not need to. And then just kind of smooth it out. Smooth it out and then take your rat and you're just gonna roll the hair up. And as I'm rolling it up, I just kind of spread the hair a little bit to get it to cover to the ends. <sighs> Okay, I need to use my mirror. I have a mirror here. I don't know why I insist on using the um, computer. All right, so then I'm just going to kind of spread it out a little bit. And now what I like to do is kind of curve it up like this, and that'll give you that sort of like Betty Page look. If you take the ends and just shape it like that. Okay, then hold it in place with one hand. Take your bobby pins. And then just put them in from behind like this. So I'm taking it and it's pushing forward. And I usually have to put a few on each side to really get it to grip. So I'm gonna keep working with this. Yeah, when Missy does my bumper bangs, um, she doesn't use a rat. It's kind of like, the home method to use a rat, I think. But 
Missy, you can correct me, but I think the way that you would do it in like a photo shoot setting would be to set my hair, tease, tease it up to high heaven, and then just form the bangs with my hair. Um, and if you guys remember my hair in my book, um, Gertie Sews Jiffy Dresses, Missy gave me the most like epic, beautiful bumper bang <laughs> ever in that book. So I still, I still think fondly back up yeah, onto it, into it, onto it. Um, Missy says, yes, exactly. Okay. So yes, Missy corroborates my feelings. So yeah, I feel like I always struggle a little bit to get it exactly where I want it. So I'm just going to keep putting pins in. <laughs> you had unicorns hand, hands that day. Oh my God. You really did, Missy. I mean, it doesn't need to be repeated that I love every photo shoot we've ever done together, but um, there was something about that day every hairstyle you gave me and she just kept whipping out like more hairstyles missy are you like horrified by how many bobby pins i'm putting into my hair right now um she just like she was like why don't i just do like three amazing hairstyles in one day why don't i all right so i feel good about that i probably have too many bobby pins in here and i could pull some out because sometimes it's hard to really get them to catch unicorn hands does the rat have a wire for shaping? No, it doesn't. It's just like a sponge. Ah, okay. More, <laughs> you love it. More and more. Um, all right. So I feel good about this. You can see one of my pins right here. So I'm just going to shove that in a little bit more. Um, yeah. What do you guys think? I like the bang. I'm happy with the bang. Um, then we're going to do the rest of it. I'm going to take the rest of my hair and just part it real sloppy because it doesn't matter. You're not going to see this. So just into two parts right here. And I don't, guys, I don't know. This is not an official thing to do, but this is what I started doing with my hair. And it looks so silly to watch myself do it. But to get the shape of the scarf, to like fill out the scarf. I've just been like taking both sides of my hair and like turning them into a scarf shape and then like twisting them. You guys are gonna think I'm so ridiculous. Twisting that into a little ball on the top of my head. More bobby pins. I just need like two for that. Okay, so guys, this I know this looks ridiculous. For the record, we're gonna cover it with a scarf. Okay, so now you take the ends of the scarf and see how my hair is like filling out the scarf up here? That's why I like that. Okay, so pull this point forward, knot it over like that and then this little point goes to the back and then make a bow a bow and then fluff your bow and then kind of tuck in the ends here and um that's it that's it you can like add some hairspray um, yeah, what do you think, Missy? I invented, did I invent that? She's gonna burst my bubble here. She's gonna be like, um, that's how it's done. No, she's not, Missy wouldn't say that. Um, I feel like I invented that, Missy. So yeah, that's it. Um, and then I feel like this hairstyle really works well with some earrings, right? So you have a little like Carmen Miranda thing going on. Um, uh, so now I don't find this itchy on the ears. 
Um, I find this quite comfortable and because of the way my hair is up here, like with that fullness on the sides, um, the scarf just stays in place, which is nice too. Gonna pull your little earlobe out. Yeah, so very quick and easy. And the ironic thing about this hairstyle is that when people see it, they're like, oh my God, oh my God, I love your hairdo. <laughs> I'm like, oh, thank you, thank you. And I think it's because it has a lot of like style to it. Oh, there's the lipstick thing again. You know, it's not just like a, it's like, it's a choice. Choices, choices 2020. Um, so yeah, um, that was too much work. Okay. That was too much work for you. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Um, yeah, so that's it guys. Any questions? Um, any, Jenny says this hair stuff is voyeurism for me. I have a short undercut. I can do a poodle and that's it. Your poodle is so cute though. And anyone who wants to know what they can do with short hair, go check out Jenny. <laughs> Sorry, Jenny. <laughs> I'm just going to send everyone to you. So, wow. It's only 518. Um, <laughs> where do you get the scarf? Where do you get the wrap? Where do you get the earrings? The scarf is by a company called Jacconet, and I got it at Sally Beauty. The, what's the next one? Uh, you're embarrassed, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jenny. Um, the hair rat is from Amazon, and the earrings are by Vixen by Micheline Pitt. You guys wanna talk about my outfit? This is the rockabilly dress from my book, Gertie Sews, no. Gertie's Ultimate Dress Book. <laughs> I'm just so used to saying because um, Gertie's ultimate or no, Ugh. Gertie sews Jiffy dresses is the one I feel like most people are sewing from right now. So, um, but yeah, this dress is from Gertie's ultimate dress book. I love a puff sleeve. I feel like I need to do more more with that. Okay. Hi Megan. Megan caught the live. Um, any more questions? Uh, let's see. I have long hair to my bottom. Would I be able to do a bumper bang or do I have to cut bangs? Recommend? Um, I don't know. I mean, it really depends on how thin or thick your hair is. Um, I would try it. I mean, there's no harm in trying it, you know, do that same thing and kind of roll up your hair. It might look amazing because you're going to have a lot of fullness. So give it a try. <laughs> you want to see my knitting? Um, you've been living for all the bishop sleeves. I know I'm kind of having like a sleeve moment. I'm working on another sleeve that I think you guys are going to like a lot. Um, all the dramatic sleeves. <laughs> I just imitated the tutorial at the same time and it was not the same, but it is great. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I mean, it's so funny when you try to follow someone else's tutorial, especially for hair or makeup, because I just feel like there are so many factors that go into the finished look, like how you normally do your hair, your hair type, how long it is, how thick it is, what the texture is, what you have on hand. Like there's just so many factors that you're, you're probably gonna get a slightly different result. But I think the kind of beauty of it is that we tend to discover what works for us that way. And like everything that I show you guys is just things that I've tried and, and, and work for me. And a lot of things I learned from this too, obviously. All right, let me get the knitting. Sorry, I, I left it in the other room because I was like, they don't want to see. It's just more stripes. What of course you do. Um, okay, I'm back. Luckily nothing can get too far away in this house. <laughs> Okay, so I've made it my goal to knit a stripe a day 
which I'm sure doesn't sound like a lot, but it takes me a while because now the whole thing is joined in the round. I just don't want my needles to come off. The whole thing is joined in the round. So I have to get all the way around. Oh, it's so cute. I'm loving this pink and ivory stripe. So that's it. Um, I have like seven more, it's gonna be, it's like waist, it's crop length. So this is, um, this is, uh, guys, train of thought. Um, Poison Girls Jailbird blouse. So it's gonna have a little like mock turtleneck and it has these like ribbed sleeves and a ribbed waistband. So I just have to do like seven more stripes and I'm doing like decreases every six rounds for the waist shaping. So it goes into a little waist shape. And then that's it. I just have to do the um, the ribbed bands at the neck, armholes, and the waist. So I'm very excited. So yes, one stripe a day is the goal. And that's eight rounds around the entire thing. So probably in a, a week, maybe sooner, if I just sit on the couch and did all weekend, I should be ready to do the um, the ribbing. So fun, huh? I'm really living for these colors together. I'm so happy. It's going to look good with this hairdo, too. Um, guys, the pattern is, um, you can get it on Ravelry, okay? So Ravelry and look up Poison Girls. If anyone wants to share a, a link, that would be great. Um, so, yeah, Amy is a friend of mine, the designer, and she um, designs all sort of rockabilly vintage-inspired knitting patterns. So I, I've known Amy for years and um, she actually came to one of my sewing retreats here and I, that's how I met her. And then I've been saying that I'm going to knit one of her sweaters since that for years. <laughs> and um, I'm finally doing it. So I hope she's proud of me. Um, so I've enjoyed it so much. I have to tell you guys that I've ordered more yarn <laughs> to do. Let's just admire. Hmm. I've ordered more yarn to do a boardwalk blouse, which is another one of her sweaters. And I really love this yarn, this um, cotton and bamboo blend. So her boardwalk blouse, someone just mentioned it, is um, in the same yarn, but the fingering version, the fingering weight. So it's gonna take a little longer to do, but it, I actually looked at the instructions. I bought the pattern off of Ravelry and it looks so much easier than this one. It'll probably take a little longer maybe, maybe because it's tinier, but um, I'm excited. And because I know how I am, I ordered two potential color combos. One is pink and blue and the other is pink and purple. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, pink. Next is the um, the lodge sweater. I actually have had the yarn for that um, for several months now. I remember talking to Amy, it must have been like in early December. And she was like, you can knit that in time for Christmas. And I was like, I can. And I don't know why I believed her, but um, it didn't happen. And so I have the yarn. So I think I'm going to do, do these two sweaters, the Jailbird and the, um, the Boardwalk blouse. And then I feel like I'm going to just get a nice head start on that Christmas sweater so that it's ready. So, yeah, I'm really happy that um, quarantine has, like, finally gotten me to sit down and knit. Um, I I mean, I have known how to knit for a long time. And I used to knit a lot of, like, like bags and hats and um, scarves and stuff like that, but I've never done a sweater. So this is totally new to me and it's just been really fun. <laughs> the Gertie and Malicia sweater. <laughs> yeah, so pink, pink, pink. <laughs> um, okay, oh, I didn't, you guys know, I never zip my dresses if I'm home alone. I, there, okay. Any uh, every any knitting knitting questions, knitting comments? Um, yeah, it's just really fun. The cha cha cardigan—that's a really cute one. 
Yeah, I just, I've been enjoying it. So really recommend her patterns too. I mean, everyone, everyone does. And I would say like as someone who hasn't um, knitted a sweater before, it was like a bit of a learning curve, but there's so much knitting content out there that it's really easy to just, you know, Google is your friend, YouTube is your friend. And anytime you're not sure about a term, just Google it and you will within seconds have a short clip of a video showing you exactly how to do it. So it's just, yeah, it's been really fun. And I, um, there was only one, one point where I was like, I don't think I can do this. And it was very early on. And I've been trying not to text Amy because I just don't, I know, she, I know she wouldn't mind, but like, I'm sure she's like, you know, you know, you don't want to abuse things like that. So I was like, only a few rows in it was the wrapping and turning and then picking up the the wraps and I was just like I can't I don't know I just <laughs> I don't know what this means but I figured it out on my own so I did not need to take advantage of that so but there's so many lovely ladies in the knitting community including Amy who have said like you know, reach out to me anytime if you need help. And they've just been so welcoming. Um, so yeah, I just, I love that. <sighs> and I actually reordered um, the book Stitch and Bitch. I know that we've, we've talked about that book here before. That's actually part of how I learned to knit when I used to do a lot more knitting. Love that book. I mean, the, I feel like the projects are gonna be really dated now. Um, because it was very much like a product of what, like 10, 12 years ago. And like everyone was knitting like sweaters with skulls and like, I don't know. I just feel like it might be a little bit, a little bit like of its time, but I'm not, I really don't want the projects. I want like her, like Debbie Stoller was the author and I'm a big fan of hers because she is one of the founders of Bust Magazine, which I'm a huge fan of. And she has a way of writing about knitting that I still remember things that I read in that book. So for some reason, I gave my copy away or donated it or something. I thought I wasn't going to be knitting anymore. And now I regretted it. So I ordered a new copy of it. The Lodge sweater goes quick. It's fun, really. I'm just worried about those holly berries. But we'll cross that bridge when we get, when we get there. <laughs> I tell people that all the time. Google it. <laughs> Malisha can confirm. That's one of <laughs> the most frequent things I say in the office. Google it. Um, you got to meet Debbie Stoller a few years ago, and, and she is fabulous. I believe that. She's really great. Oh, Marion, that's nice to say. Um, okay, so the other thing I want to talk about today is Animal Crossing. Okay, so as you know, Happy and angry loops. Oh my God, I know. Okay, as you know, I have been playing Pocket Camp, or maybe you don't know. <laughs> you may know that I have gotten addicted. I'm not a gamer. I don't know how to play video games, but because everyone was really getting into Animal Crossing and all of that in quarantine, I downloaded Pocket Camp onto my phone and became obsessed with it. And then I also managed to get a Switch Lite so that I could play New Horizons, which is like, you know, the actual, like, I was about to say grown up version of the game, but it's a, I don't, it's a very cutesy little game. And so I have been playing, so I've still been addicted to Pocket Camp and I've been working on that. Um, not as much as I was in the beginning, but I'm still like, you know, crafting my amenities. Um, I, you know, I have to go fishing every day. I have to, you know, fulfill all my animals requests and all of that. You know how it is. Um, and I've actually transformed my campsite so that every, so the, the theme of the campsite for a while, it was like pink, beautiful, coordinated. Um, I got all of this like beautiful pastel furniture and cherry blossom tree fun stuff in the fortune cookies. Like, cause now there's like a thing where you sign in, when you sign in every day, you get a fortune cookie. And guys, I got like a magic flying carpet that my animals can ride on. And that was kind of the beginning of the end. Oh, I got my picnic set. And now the theme of the campsite is just fun. 
All right. So if it's fun, I put it in there and nothing makes me happier than seeing my little animals flying on their little carpet or now they have a juggling set juggling or watching a movie. I got that um, outdoor movie screen with some benches so they can sit and watch movies together. They have their picnic. I have the carousel now. So it's just like fun, all fun all the time. And they seem to be really enjoying themselves. <laughs> um, so what's everyone talking about? You're only level 13. Um, you guys are still talking about knitting. Um, so I'm now level 50 something. And um, I I've started logging into like just doing a little bit every day on New Horizons as well. But I mean, as I shared here, I didn't get as like instantly addicted to New Horizons because it just seems like more of a, it sounds so silly, but there's like more of a learning curve and it's more of like a world building thing. And it's going to be a while before, I mean, I don't know if you guys are like addicted to Reddit like I am, but if you go on like the subreddits for Animal Crossing and all that, you'll see these like beautifully realized islands and like, oh, I did a Disney World theme on my island and it's perfect in every way. And like, I just have like, a tent with a cardboard box in it. And I'm like feeling a little overwhelmed <laughs> by the whole thing. So anyway, I've been working on it and um, I feel like I'm ready to make friends. This is my big announcement. <laughs> I feel like I'm ready to make some friends on New Horizons. So do you guys know how I can get you guys my information? Because I know that on pocket camp it was super easy to just give you my uh, account number or whatever it is that when you go to your um do you guys know what i'm saying um do you got your nintendo friends sharing setting so i think i have that so let me tell you guys what this is because i took a picture of it earlier today um, let's see. So let's see. What is it? What is it? S W dash three O eight O dash five five one eight dash Eight seven one five bank account or something. Um, yes. So that is my New Horizons friend code. If you guys want to come find me, it would be fun. I'm ready. I'm ready to make friends. Um, you guys are sharing your pocket camps. That's great. I can also share my pocket camp if you guys want. Um. I know I've shared it here before, but let me find it again. You guys are sharing your pocket camp. Let's see. Okay, so. Let me find this. Share your ID. Okay, here's my pocket camp. Pocket camp. I love how I can't type anything into this and you guys are like chatting away so so capable strong capable women five three zero five five four oh two in my defense there's a lot of glare right now six five three um yeah new horizons is on the switch only so if you told me that I would be buying a Nintendo Switch this year, I would never have believed you. <laughs> oh, I just kicked the camera. Um, yeah, so New Horizons is on the Switch or the Switch Lite, which is what I have. It's just the handheld one. Um, and then... Pocket Camp, if you can't get a Switch or if you just want to dabble, you can play Pocket Camp on your phone. So um, 
Marin's got to go. Bye, Marin. Um, I'm gonna make someone else a um, moderator. Jenny, are you up? Are you up to it? I just saw Jenny. Where'd she go? All right, Jenny's got Jenny's got the power. Jenny Barnes, um, you're here now. I know, I know. Let's make the other Jenny a moderator too. You don't if you're if I'm just making you a moderator and you're not into it, like you can just ignore me. Um, Jenny Girl is now a moderator too. Um, <laughs> um, Kate says she'll do it. Okay, awesome. Kate, you're a moderator. Um, <laughs> okay, we now have plenty of protection against trolls. So let's see, Jenny was saying um, Pocket Camp brought in the cutest chocolate mint cafe yesterday. That's going to be my new theme. I love the chocolate mint cafe. I also am really into that piss, the pink crystal fantasy going on. But I need a lot more of these um, thing where you go take the classes. I need a lot more of those little medals. So I've got a lot more work to do before I can get um, pink crystals. Um, how many Jennies are there? <laughs> oh yeah, there's Jenny Taylor too. There's, there's three of you guys. Um, all right. Thanks guys. <laughs> um, all right. Do we have any other topics to discuss today? You're Mr. Jingle. We, let's see. I can't really tell you what I'm like working on right now. Henry's doing pretty well. Um, he, so he had like an upper respiratory infection and he was on antibiotics for 10 days and it completely cleared up. But now I'm noticing it take him back to the vet or not. So we'll see. We'll see. He's doing well. It's now um, porch season, which he's super excited about because I have a um, screened in back porch, which is his favorite place in the world. He will stay out there 24 hours a day if I let him. He like likes to watch the birdies and like um, there's some lawn furniture out there that he sleeps on. So he's very happy that it's now um, porch weather. Mr. Jingles. Yeah, he's doing well, though. And then um, what else? Ah, cat TV. Let's talk about the next upcoming Patreon video. Um, so I should be filming that next week. I was supposed to be filming. You want to see him use his cat inhaler? Oh my God. I actually, I would love to show you how cute he is when he gets his little, um, manicure, his little paw to cure, as they say, because he is such a good little baby. I can hold him like a baby. Just grab his, so I do this just myself, grab his little paws and then just with like a human nail trimmer. Just go deep, deep, deep. And he's totally fine with it. He's like so relaxed. It's very cute. Um, so videos. So I was supposed to shoot a video yesterday, guys, but I had like, I had like a meltdown a little bit. Um, it was like a, a widow van do a, a widow von do moment. <laughs> I let my um inner saboteur get the best of me. Um we're just going to speak in um, drag race slang now. But um, yeah, I had like a really hard, it's been a stressful week. I'm not going to talk too much about it, but it's been a stressful week with like um, work stuff and um, everything's fine. Everything's fine. But like yesterday I just got like all up in my head, like, like a drag queen on drag race. I, I was like, I could not like, I, I don't know. I was in a bad headspace. And normally I can like push forward no matter what happens <laughs> in video. And sometimes you really have to, cause like, especially if you're like in Cleveland, Ohio and you're filming something for PBS, like there's really no choice. But I think one of the downsides of quarantine is that I don't have a team like depending on me. So it's like very insular. Um, so, and then I started, I wanted this video to be like very beginner friendly. 
And so I was going to show how to cut the project and everything, which I don't normally show. But I was using this really amazing fabric from B&J. And as I was doing it, I was kind of talking through it. And I realized like all the problems with my plan, like this, it was this vintage silk shirting and it's 36 inches wide, which is unusual. And it's also a plaid, it has like a window pane plaid. And so as I was like explaining it, I was saying things like, well, your fabric will be this. So you do this and like, you know, you shouldn't be using a plaid, but I'm going to. And like, and I was just like, and because of my like attitude, I was just like, I'm a failure. And like, <laughs> just could not, I had to step away. Like, I was just like, I have to come back to this and come back with a new plan. So what I decided to do was do a new, do a different fabric that was more like, where I could really show people I'm still making the thing with the amazing silk shirting and I'm kind of, I worked on it a little bit today, but I, I like pulled some out of my stash that's still from B&J because that's the other thing is this is um, sponsored by B&J. So I wanted it to be B&J fabric. So there are some limitations on the project. So I don't know. I just, I feel like it's very easy also once you start like gaining some traction on YouTube, which is a great thing. Like, don't get me wrong, but you can really like internalize like a lot of the comments and feedback to where, to a point where it can sort of like paralyze you. Um, so I think like it was just a combination of things yesterday. And um, I ended up going for a walk and taking a nap. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna get back at it tomorrow with my new fabric plan. And um, yeah, I'm anticipating it being a lot smoother. And then that just kind of puts me a day off of my plan, which is fine. It might mean I need to do photos this weekend or something, but I'm not gonna stress too much about it. Um, thank you guys. Um, you all are saying really nice things. Thank you. Um, <laughs> don't make me cry. You know I will. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just sometimes it's hard to come up with a plan for what to do on video. And um, it. I just promise you that it's so much harder than it looks. <laughs> and it's really like, it's very... Um, like when you're watching a video, you're like, why didn't they do it this way? Or why didn't, you know, just tell me this part or like, just get to the point or whatever it is when you like have that frustration as a YouTube viewer. And I will just tell you as like a content creator it is like so hard to know what to do sometimes. And um, yeah, but I mean, I'm, I'm very lucky in that the majority of my feedback is so sweet and nice and um, encouraging. So I make it look so easy. <laughs> Thank you guys. I promise you it's it's not. I have some days where I'm like, I nailed it. Um, but then other days it's just, you know, it's work. So I just, um, yeah, I think I have a good plan for how this is going to go tomorrow. So we'll see. We'll see. I just want it, like I said, I want it to be very um, beginner friendly. So that's always a challenge of its own own in a project when you're like oh and by the way what's a seam allowance you know what I mean like how far do you go back into how much knowledge do you assume that someone has because obviously you're not you can't do a video that's like learn to sew and make a project though I have attempted it before with things like you know the napkin video it's like learn to thread your machine and then make a simple napkin you know there's that but for the most part it's assumed that you need some outside knowledge, but yeah, it's just like striking a balance between what, what can I assume that they can get somewhere else? And what do I want to make sure, what questions do I want to make sure are answered in this video? So yeah, you guys will love it. I think you actually will. I think you'll really like the project and I keep kicking my camera. I know I keep saying that it's beginner, but it's also like, um, 
it's appealing to people who have sewn for a long time too, for a variety of reasons. So it's one of those like, you know, jiffy projects that if you've been sewing for a long time, like hopefully I like nailed the the silhouettes and all of that. And um, it'll be appealing enough, even though it's an easy project to like get you to want to sew it. And of course you can always like make it more interesting with fancy fabrics, which you know, I like to do. You think tomorrow will be a good filming day? I think you're right. I have a good, I have a good feeling about it. <sighs> yeah. Um, I'm hoping this video comes out this month. So this is kind of, um, what's the date? May 7th. We'll see. Hopefully by the end of the month, it'll be on YouTube. Yeah, we'll see. I usually give myself weekends off. Yeah, I actually have been, um, which has been really positive. <laughs> and um, I've been doing stuff like I have this. You guys know my pink couch, right? I have this like huge pink sectional in my living room and I usually sit on one part of it. And, but then I have a spot on the other side of it. That's like my weekend sitting spot. So that's where I go to like sit and work on my knitting and like I catch up on um putting my photos from the week into my journal and um what else do I do over there oh animal crossing obviously so so yeah and I haven't really felt like sewing that much on the weekends I've kind of told myself at the beginning of the weekend like oh if I feel like sewing I will um do this this and this but Honestly, everything I'm working on right now is work. Like I don't have any projects that are like just fun sewing projects. So I've been kind of staying away from it on the weekends just to like give myself some boundaries unless it's like crunch time. Meditating, I know, oh gosh, I know. I, I meditated once for five minutes <laughs> and it was really great. It was great. I did like a little meditation app on my phone and I did five minutes of it. And I was like, wow, that was amazing. And then I never did it again. So that would be good. Do we, do we know your pink couch? Um, you love the hair combs? Oh, that's great to hear. Yeah, the, the grip tooth ones. Um, yeah, Sarah, you always read the instructions and, and then sew with the video, yeah. That's good. Yeah, I like to, um, there's some stuff that I feel like you want to have a good foundation from reading the instructions. And like, then you can also read the sources for things like interfacing and fabric and all of that, and then watch the video. Like, I feel like that's a good approach. Though now we're definitely um, relying more on video with um, things like Patreon and YouTube, because we can't do for like a Patreon project. We're not going to have it fully illustrated every month. Like we do with charm patterns just because we wouldn't be able to make the month turnaround. So what I've been doing is having, if there's anything that I'm like this 100% needs an illustration, then we get it from Robin. Robin, by the way, is our technical illustrator and she does all of the like line drawings and um, technical how to illustrations and everything. And she is amazing. She worked at Vogue patterns for like 20 years and she's just so great. Actually, the story of how we started working together is really funny. Um, right around the time, if you guys know, I started charm patterns um, with a Kickstarter campaign, which is like a crowdfunding campaign. So the first two patterns you could pre-order essentially through Kickstarter. And the first two patterns were the Rita blouse and um, the first iteration of the L'Amour dress. And so around the time I was kind of planning charm patterns and planning the Kickstarter, I got an email out of the blue from Robin. And she said that she had just, she just like introduced herself and said, you know, I've just left, um, left my job of 20 years at Vogue patterns um, just to like, Work, she wanted to like work freelance and she was making a transition to working freelance and she knew my patterns and my books and like, was I ever in need of a technical illustrator? And like, that was like such a moment of like kismet because I had been having the thought of like, how am I going to get these things illustrated? How am I going to get these? Like, who's going to be my graphic designer? Like I was like looking to hire people. So 
it kind of came at the perfect time. And um, I reached out to her and said like, yes, I'm totally looking for that. And we've been working together ever since. And she is just, I just love working with her so much. She, she can um, do the illustrations without needing photographs, which some if people aren't that like well-versed in sewing illustration, you might have to like take photos as you're going, which can be hard to make yourself do or to like make sure you have every step of the process. She can basically visualize the way something comes together with just the pattern pieces. So like the illustrator file of the pattern pieces and work from that. So she is just amazing, um, super just like valuable, valuable part of our team. And I love working with her. A little behind the scenes. So let's see. Hi, Anicia. You're sewing your lace dress. Lots of new wrenches today. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Marin had to go. Oh, Marin, you're back. Um, so we just started handing out wrenches. <laughs> So yeah, we've got lots of new troll slayers. Yeah, so we'll see if I take the weekend off. I might do the photos. I might not. I don't know. We'll see. I'm kind of starting to feel like I might need a vacation or something. Um, but like a staycation, right? I don't know. <laughs> Trolls aren't even daring to show up. I know. They've heard. All right, everyone. Trisha says, I'm wondering if you have any recommendations for dresses to sew when my size is changing. I've made a few popover dresses. Another great one is the shirt waist dress from my first book. Um, well, today's the day where I forget the names of all the books I've written. Um, Gertie's Ultimate Dress Book. And uh, it has elastic shirring in the back, which, so the, the front is kind of fitted with darts and then the back is like a wide panel that you shirr in the waistline with like a few rows of shirring. And then it kind of has like a little blue sawn effect at the back waist and it, that's really cute. And it fits no matter how your weight fluctuates really. So, or your shape, so that's nice. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys for telling me what, <laughs> I can't believe I can't remember what, what books are called, what, and what projects are in what book, but, um, all right, everyone. So let's see, Jesse, you're asking a question about Liz dress fitting changes. This isn't like a great forum for talking about fit issues just because it can be really hard to visualize what people are talking about. So I would recommend that if you can, you post photos to um, Gertie Sew and Tell, which is our Facebook group. It's like a fan Facebook group and people are really helpful on there. Um, with the straps falling off, um, I did write about, I wrote a little section about it in the fitting chapter. So, I mean, I know you mentioned elastic already, but, um, you know, I would say just making sure that you take the straps up, you can adjust the length is probably going to be a big thing for you. So, yeah. Um, okay. Anisia says I made a gaping adjustment for the straps and it made them less wide. So yeah, you could change the angle of the straps by taking a tuck in. But again, this isn't like a great forum for showing you how to make a fit change. So yeah, there are a few things you can do, um, including changing the length and like changing the angle so that it like goes in a little bit more. All right, everyone. Um, it's almost six o'clock. Um, thank you for joining me. I hope you liked my little hair tutorial today. Um, so let's see. I won't be back tomorrow because tomorrow is 
a new shot at filming tomorrow. So wish me luck. Um, it's going to be a good day. It's going to be great. It's going to be positive. Um, can we do a crowdcast fitting? Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I really feel like fitting is best taught in person or one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and I've been trying to keep those skills to my small group workshops for the most part, but it's definitely something to think about. Um, and also, you know, because I make the charm patterns like fit chapters so comprehensive and then we have the sew and tell, like hopefully between those two things, people can get fit feedback and fit guidelines. All right, everyone. Um, yeah, if you're interested in a workshop, I usually do them like eight to 10 times a year here in Beacon, New York. Most of them are being canceled this year, but that's another story. But that's the best way for me to teach fitting is to be with you and working directly on your body and then showing you how to adjust your pattern. So um, yeah, if you ever get a chance to do an in-person fitting workshop, that's really the way to learn fitting. So yeah, dress forms are not that great for fitting unless you can make an exact replica of your body. And even then it's not going to move or have the sort of um, elasticity that your body has usually. So, um, but I do, I am going to do a talk about dress forms. So, and how I use them and why I use them. And it's not for fitting usually, but um, I will talk about that. All right, everyone. Um, yeah, I do travel for sewing seminars. I'm obviously not planning any travel right now, but um, yeah, that's something that I will pick up again in the future when I'm allowed to leave my house. Okay, everyone. Um, a vintage shoe tutorial. <laughs> you guys are crazy. Like I'm gonna show you how to make shoes. Um, I don't actually know how to make shoes. Yeah, there are a lot of students, past retreat student, students here. So yeah, they are, everyone says they're worth it. And that's, again, just the best forum for me to teach fitting. But um, yeah, <laughs> guys, I can't leave my house. I can't go anywhere. Um, all right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. A shoe show and tell for sure. That would be really fun. All right, how to be a shoe? Just feel the shoe, be the shoe. Um, <laughs> all right, everyone, thank you so much for joining today and for your words of encouragement. And um, yeah, so I won't be back for with a live until next week, but so Monday I'll be back, I think Monday. I will put it in my stories on Instagram and I will um, update you. And I know you have requests for topics, so. I'm keeping them all in mind. All right. Thank you, everyone. I will see you next time. Goodbye.